Erev Tov, everyone. Good evening and very happy uh, Yom Ha'atzma'ut. The, uh, perhaps a, it, it's an order to mention that even though today, even though it's tonight and it's not the fifth of ER, it's only the fourth, nevertheless, uh, Israel at its very beginning wanted to make sure that celebrations of Yom Ha'atzma'ut and observances of Yom HaZikaron which precedes it, um, do not involve any violation of Shabbat. So when the fifth day of ER comes either on Friday, Shabbat, or Sunday, uh, by, by law, actually, Yom Ma'ut is celebrated uh, the, uh, on Thursday, as it is today. The, uh, uh, there, there are some differences as to whether we say halal or we don't say halal. We say halal with a bracha or without a bracha. Wonderful, good Jews who love the land of Israel and the state of Israel can come to different halachic conclusions. Tonight is not going to focus on that issue, but I will and intend to take note uh, in various places within the shir, certainly at the end, of the, the essential nature and the beauty and the magnificence of, uh, of Medinat Yisrael, uh, which is a gift from HaKadosh Baruch Hu to the Jewish people. Why we were Zoha, that gift that uh, no one can know. I might even add no one can even speculate. We don't know. But we do know that we are the beneficiaries of this magnificent state. You know, there are 24,000 people who have been murdered, al Kiddush Hashem, in Eretz Israel or in quote, what was called uh, erroneously Palestine uh, before the state was created, 24,000 people that are memorialized on Yom Karon, which was observed this morning and this afternoon. Uh, and people talk about the state of Israel and its importance to the Jewish people. Please remember, in Auschwitz, 24,000 murders was a day's work. And this is over a hundred years. So we have to thank HaKadosh Baruch Hu for this gift and never treat it lightly. It is not perfect. Uh, one of the things that I often say is, um, you know, people have relationships so, with each other over long periods of time. And sometimes we disagree. Sometimes we feel hurt. or Sometimes we, we feel that uh, the other party and it doesn't matter whether it's a marriage or whether it's a, uh, or, or whether it's a long-term close friendship. Uh, sometimes we have our differences. But let's say in a marriage, uh, the anniversary comes and we either go out to dinner or we, we share an evening together and we, do, and we say, as Shlomo Melech said, Kulach Yafa Rayati, for one day at least, there are no blemishes. Ein mumbach. We don't look at we don't look at blemishes. We don't look at weaknesses. We just say kulach yafa rayati. You are completely beautiful, my beloved, and mum uh, einbach. For tonight, at the very least, there is no there is no blemish. Tomorrow, a month from now, sure, that's what it means. We we look at our blemishes. And we share them, but we share them lovingly. We, and we seek to be able to, uh, to overcome them. All right. Today, though, we're, is Parshat Kedoshim. And this year, because it's a, uh, it is a uh, Shana uh, Mu'uberet, it is a leap year. We have four ex roughly four extra weeks. And therefore, the, many of the, the, uh, the, the Parshiot, which are linked together, are separate, not all, but they, 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 they are separate. Uh, because that's the case, this week we read Parshat Kedoshim, uh, as last week we read Achremot, usually they're read in tandem. So we're going to focus on the very beginning of Parshat Kedoshim, that bears its name. And uh, it is one of the easiest questions to answer, and perhaps the most difficult question to answer. What does it mean to be holy? Now, Rashi, of course, tells us, the famous Rashi says, 
Kedoshim to you, you you must be sanctified, Kedoshim sanctified. We don't know what that means exactly, but Rashi gives us one very acceptable, of course, and very widespread accepted interpretation. Evu Pirushim Minarayo, Uminavira. You need to separate yourself from promiscuity, from illicit sexual behavior, from illicit sexual relationships with, uh, with people that we may not have um, intimacy, whether it is uh, because of incest or because of gender, whatever it may be. We are to stay uh, kedoshim to you. You want to be an Adam Kadosh, you want to know what it means to be sanctified from a Jewish perspective. So kedoshim to you. One second, I just have to uh, have people enter. I'm sorry. I want to make sure that I can. Ten minutes. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so if you want to be sanctified, so um, so you don't engage in illicit uh, illicit sexual behavior. That's Rashi, and of course Rashi does not need my endorsement. That is something which is which is standard. Uh, one of the ways in which we can become. A, a sanctified human being. However, the Ramban gives us a different perspective. Many of us know this Ramban. The, Ram, the Ramban says that it, it should not be limited to sexual promiscuity or anything of that nature, but rather, or illicit sexual behavior, but rather if a person wishes to be kadosh, they wish to be sanctified, then the Ramban uses the famous phrase, that a person learns not to be gluttonous. So, for example, if I'm allowed to, if I'm if I'm allowed to eat kosher meat, that doesn't mean I have to have doubles, triples, and, and quadruples. Uh, and that that extends itself to other areas as as well. The Ramban seems to say that we have to realize that sanctity is not an act or even a series of acts. The Ramban seems to say to us that a person can become sanctified if, um, if they, it's a, that it's a way of life, that they become sanctified by the way they conduct themselves with the thing, the very elements of life which we're allowed to have. It's how we approach that which is permitted to us which can make us sanctified. Now, uh, I oftentimes give the example, you don't need me for this, this Rav Aaron Lichtenstein, Zecher, Sadik Levrocha, the late and great Rosh Yeshiva of Gush, who, who inspired generations of students, uh, young and old, I might add, uh, through his erudition, uh, through his brilliance, through the Torah that he knew, but more than anything else, he lived a life of sanctity. So when we, those people who were Zohar to know him and see him, they, they began to get an entree into what it means to live a life of sanctity. He wrote a book uh, in which he talked about uh, Jewish life. Uh, and one of the chapters he entitled, Glot Kosher Hedonism. Glot Kosher Hedonism, which means that everything, I, I, my, my, my child is getting married. Uh, I am renting out uh, the hotel and I'm renting out two bands. And, I, and then on top of that, I'm going, to have, um, I'm going to have people come around. All the waiters are coming around and serving over and it never ends. So he calls that glot kosher hedonism. It's kosher. It's beautiful. Hashem loves you. I love, Hashem loves that. But when we engage in that behavior, especially if we do it as a part of our routine in life. So he says, you'll never become a kadosh. A kosher Jew, absolutely. Good Jew, absolutely. But if it is to become a sacred, sanctified human being, then we need as much as possible to stay away from excess. The Ramban tells us that's what it is. Now, of course, one of the questions we have to ask ourselves is, um, is this a mitzvah? Kedoshim, the Torah tells us, 
Dabir el Kol Adat Bnei Israel. All the Jews were gathered. The Amarta Alehem. So in other words, this is obviously significant and applicable to every Jew. You shall say to them, Kedoshim Tihiyu. Now the word Tihiyu is an interesting word. The word Haya, Hoya, ho, ho, Haita, ha, ha, whatever it may be, it's a word which indicates it's an existential idea. It's not what I do. It's what I am. Oftentimes, I've heard Russia Yeshiva say, well, ask a, a student, what do you want to be? And he said, I'd like to be an accountant. He said, no, I'm not asking you what you want to do. I'm asking you what you want to be. And that is the idea here. The Torah does not say, Kedoshim Tasu, or Pu'ulot Shal Kedusha Tasu. It says, Kedoshim to you, your essence, your being must be infused with sanctity. Rashi says, that means to say, be very careful uh, in how you live your life uh, in terms of intimacy with others. And the Ramban says, I'm not saying no. The Ramban is saying, though, that it's not limited to that. Because Kedoshim to you, the very verb, you shall be, means that it is, it is a lifestyle way of looking at the world the ability to be able to say no I don't need I don't need three fancy cars I don't need a house that that's a, that it has who knows how many stories etc of course some things times we do need there's no avera in a nice car there's no avera in a big house but if we're looking for a life of sanctity then we need to be able to say kadesh atzmacha b'mutar lacha separate yourself even with the things that are perfectly permitted. By the way, even the Rambam, when he mentions um, uh, living a, a, a noble life, he says there's nothing wrong with a nice house. Absolutely, there's nothing wrong with a nice house. And of course, there were no cars then necessarily, but whatever it was, the people, there's nothing wrong with nice. But we have to be able to set self-imposed limits on materialism. And that's the Rambam. And next, he says, the Rambam also says, that a person, by, by not living a life of Kedusha, can become a menuval Yerushuta Torah. Um, one of the things that I always, always, every year they have this, uh, this uh, uh, Coney Island uh, hot dog contest where somebody can wolf down 100 hot dogs in 10 minutes, even if they're perfectly kosher hot dogs. And, and he made a bracha beforehand. And he made a bracha achrona. Very good. But... Uh, he still becomes a menuval. He becomes, in a way, gross, as we would say, to live a life of, uh, of humility and uh, is, is really what we're aiming at. That's what Kedusha is, to become Kedusha. Now, I'm going to, the, the Rambam, the Rambam, Mihuchas Tshuva, says to us, Rambam Mihuchas Tshuva, Parake uh, Mishnah Bet writes as follows. The Rambam sometimes can be very, and this is in the Mishnah Torah, the Rambam sometimes can be very sharp in his statements. Al ya'avor Don't allow your thinking to be such. Davar said this matter. She'omrim, watch, he says, Kipshe umot ha'olam, the fools of the world, if a rove gold may b'nei Yisrael, and even those Jews who themselves are uh, what he would consider to be also people of of uh, of not not very uh, sophisticated existence, dumps them all together, and he says rove gold may b'nei Yisrael. You don't want to be called that by the Rambam, uh, but but he said Shachodesh Baruch Hu gozer al Hadam that God Himself decrees upon a person. From the very beginning, okay, lihiot tzadik o rasha. The Rambam says that is absolutely false. Once we do that, we subject ourselves to a non-dynamic life. I am what I am, and that's it. So therefore, he says, "Ena davar It is not so, says the Rambam. Ella kol adam ra'ui lo lihiot tzadik kemoshe rabenu. Every person has the capacity to become a tzaddik like Moshe Rabbeinu. 
or Rasha, ki Ravam ben Mevat, or to become a, 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 a sinner to the degree, uh, a despicable character, like Yeravam, who was responsible for a Vodazora in Eretz Israel and for the splitting of, of, of the Jewish people into two parts. O Chacham, O Sacha. He could, each person can seek to be a Chacham, a person who is wise, O Sacha, or a fool. O Rachaman, O Achzari, compassionate or cruel. O Kili, O Shua, or he could be he could be a person who is stingy and a miser, or sure, or generous. He says, so it is with all other human characteristics. We should never allow ourselves to fall into the trap of saying, I, I, I'll never be. You can be. I can be. We, every one of us, the Rambam says that, has the capacity to do. Now, when we say to become like Moshe Rabbeinu, of course, Certain people are more gifted intellectually. Certain people are more, more gifted uh, in terms of their, um, actually their, their, their birth situation or the wealth that they have. But we talk here not about, about quantity, but quality. The quality of a person to live a life of meaning and of value. And this is the idea of living a life of being an Adam Kadosh, a sanctified person. Now, the... The Alshech, who uh, lived in the 16th century, he was a, uh, a student of Rabbi Yosef Karo, who wrote the Shulchan Aruch, and uh, he uh, achieved his own stature. He's even to the point he's called he's called the Alshech Hakadosh, <laughs> the sanctified Alshech. Right and now, that that title is given to relatively few people, but the Alshech is one of them, and um, uh, and it, it does seem it's a pretty widespread acceptance. Uh, and he, and he wrote as follows. When God comes to teach us and to inspire us to become uh, pious people and sanctified people. This is an important word, phrase. To become godly. Okay. So ra'ah, v'hinei, Yesh bnei Adam, or here he says, really, re'e, look, v'hinei yesh bnei Adam to'im midera chasecha. There's certain people who stray from, from the proper path. Bo'omram, ki lo kol adam ra'oi lakach. Not everybody can achieve piety or achieve sanctity. Lakach, uh, and therefore he says, v'zoch alazeh, ki im chad b'dora. The very, very few people are capable of doing that. And, and the Alshech says, Ain be Israel mi shaloyasi. There's no one among the Jews who cannot uh, achieve a higher degree. Going from what I am to what I ought to be takes self examination. There's no question about that. What kind of a father am I? What kind of a husband am I? What kind of a friend I am? Who am, am I? And then I have to say to myself, all right, what kind of a father? What kind of a husband? What kind of a friend? Do I want to be? Do I ought to be? Now, of course, no one goes from level two to level 12, but the, the constant element of self-examination is what can bring a person to Kedusha. He says, that's what the Alshur says, when, when you are constantly examining and re-examining uh, in your own eyes, your own stature, that's when, that's when you grow. One of the things that um, I, I have always tried to, to do is I don't try to put people in boxes. He's from, he's not from. It might be, he's not yet from. This person may or may not be generous, but we should not look at other people, certainly other people, nor ourselves as saying, what do I, what can I ask? I'm, not, I'm not smart. No. One can say that right now my capacity is limited in a certain area. I'm going to work on increasing that capacity. Again, you know, one does not grow from being a person who, you know, with no education, um, becoming, shall we say, in the science world, an Einstein. That's true. But one can live up to their own capacity. Uh, Reb Zusha, the famous uh, statement by Reb Zusha, who was a chassid de Rebbe, he said, God, when I get to Shemaim, God's not going to ask me why I wasn't Moshe. I didn't have his intellect. Not going to ask me why I wasn't Hillel. 
well, I just didn't have that, that personality or I own a coin or didn't have that personality. He's going to ask me why I wasn't Zusha. Because each of us, of course, Hashem gives talents, each and every single one of us. And the movement to Kedusha, as the, as the Ramban tells us, is it is a lifestyle, not an act. That's really important to do, a way of looking at the world. Now, uh, the, the idea of being godlike, I think it's, it's interesting that uh, uh, we find that this is actually mentioned by, by Heschel, uh, that, you know, the people, uh, different, different uh, uh, segments of humanity have, re- look at things in different ways. So Heschel observed that the Greeks reduced God to man. In other words, if you've ever read the myths or had them read to you, or if you feel you've suffered through the myths, these are the gods become nothing more than human beings with, with um, magnified imperfections. They get angry. Uh, you don't, they get angry or, or they are selfish or they're greedy or whatever it is that they are. So the gods in the Greek eyes are, uh, are superhuman indiv- uh, individuals, but they have all the human flaws in them. So the Greeks reduced God to man. The Christians, the Christians completely reduced God so that he became man. And therefore, that's, that's how they look at the world. Judaism takes a completely different approach. Uh, Judaism elevates, elevates man to be godlike. That's so special. We need to know. How do we know that? Opening Parshan, Parshat Kedoshim. Doshim to you, why? You must, you must be, not act, you must be Kadosh. Ki Kadosh ani Hashem you, you can act God, you can, must be sanctified because I am sanctified. And you have the capacity to act God-like. Not to be God, to act god And of course, Chazal, we've seen, I've mentioned this many times and many people have, Chazal see acting God-like as mahu rachum just as God is um, is uh, compassionate, so you must be compassionate. Mahu mal bisharumim afata mal bisharumim. Just as God uh, clothes the naked, naked, uh, so you must do the same. And so, in that sense, that's how we elevate human beings to become godlike. Now, David Amelach says this too in Parak the eighth, the eighth chapter of Tehillim. David, uh, that in itself, by the way, is, is worthy of two or three Sheurim, uh, the eighth parak of, uh, of Tehillim. But one of the things, David, David used to wake up, of course, at night, in the middle of the night, and he used to look out on the stars, and, and uh, he would look at, of course, the, the, the ever-expanding universe, as we understand it now, the ever-expanding matter that exists and continues, continues outward, and we see billion, not, 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 uh, not 100, not a million, billions of uh, galaxies, each with a billion stars. He looked down and he asked the question, what is man that you should even remember him? This son of man that you should take notice of him. David asked the question. And, And of course, when you think about it, the world is so vast. The universe is so vast. Even our own earth is so vast. But once you get out, we know now and see how very, very, almost, almost unending the universe, the matter of the universe is. And David said, so why do you care about this? Why in the world? David had such a personal relationship with Hashem. And that, by the way, is what Tehillim has taught, taught us. Tehillim taught us that human beings are capable of having a relationship with God. Um, And of course, the Greeks couldn't understand that. The pagan world could not understand that. God is that power in the universe or powers in the universe that you stay away from so you won't be crushed, that you don't get them angry if they're in a bad mood. Avram Avinu started the idea. David uh, honed it 
into the safer that we call Tehillim. That's why people turn to Tehillim for everything, for joy, for comfort, for, for in times of triumph, in times of tragedy. Tehillim has everything because David HaMelech, A, experienced all of those elements, but two, uh, David HaMelech taught us that you can have a personal relationship with HaKadosh Baruch So David asked that. How is it that you care even about anybody? any human being. He answers his own question in the very next Pusik, chapter eight of Tehillim, which I would suggest that people read. Um, and he says that, uh, you want to know why God cares about us individuals? Because you, God, have made us just a touch below the angels. Why? Because we have an Ashamah. God has given us neshama, and that neshama, the ability to determine right from wrong, and the and the the inspiration to do that which is right, and to avoid that which is wrong, that neshama, that is what God has given us, and that's why God cares about us so much. And so this is the point of uh, of kedusha. Now, one other thing I'd like to say that the the term kedusha kadosh, as I've mentioned many times. Means um, means an overflow. When people do s- sacred acts, when they act, they act beautifully toward each other, and engage in in chesed and engage in compassionate acts. So then, uh, uh, w- when we engage in such acts, we become godlike. Now, the first word, the first, the, there's, the the word kedusha is only mentioned once as sanctity in all of Sefer Gresham. And it comes in uh, the very beginning of, of Sefer Bereshit, where Kodesh Baruch Hu, uh, says, Vayichal Elohim Bayom HaShvi'i, Vayichal Elohim Bayom HaShvi'i, that he completed in the seven days, by the seventh day, by a Kadesh so, and he sanctified Shabbat. So Shabbat becomes the, the paradigm of what sanctity is. What does it mean to be kadosh? So, so it means, as you realize, uh, seasons we can tell uh, by the configurations in the sky. We can tell uh, months. We can tell where the moon is in a certain, uh, in, in the sky, where stars are. And that can help us to understand uh, seasons, to help us understand Rosh Chodesh. Shabbat is completely subject to the fact that God said the seventh day will be Kadosh. He sanctified that seventh day. Sanctification is an intellectual act. How I look at things, how a Kodesh Baruch Hu looked at things. Shabbat, from every other perspective, is a day like any other day. But it's because Hashem sanctified. That is what makes it holy and special. And we have the opportunity not only to sanctify Shabbat, to sanctify all of the acts of our lives. That's our choice. And we can take things which appear to be mundane and unimportant and to elevate. And if we do that enough times, then we elevate ourselves, become godlike. Kadoshim to you, ki kadosh ani Hashem You have an obligation to work at becoming sanctified. Because I, God, am saying. Now, I just want to finish with a story about Israel, if I may, on this wonderful, magnificent day that we celebrate the gift that Hashem gave us. And it is a gift. With a, all gifts, of course, can have flaws, depending on how we use it, but it is a gift. As I say, uh, you know, 24,000 people in Palestine were killed uh, over the last 100 years. We mourn them. He memorialized them. And like I say, for Auschwitz, that was from breakfast to dinner. So we have to be very grateful, even though we're threatened more now than uh, other times, the recent times anyway. I want to tell you a story that happened to me. I believe it was in 1988. I was uh, in Israel um, uh, on a, at, at some sort of a, uh, convention that was there. 
and I was riding on a bus. Those were my pre-car rental days. I now, I only ride a bus very infrequently now in Eretz Israel. I usually try to go by car, but I'm so happy that I was on this bus. Two things, two things, two bus stories. One story is I was riding a bus on the way to the, to the convention. It was late at night. It was nine o'clock at night. And, a, uh, and the bus was very crowded. In those days, fewer people had cars. It wasn't very crowded. People were, were jammed and standing. And the bus stops on the south, southern, I think it was in Baca, uh, which is you know, south of the Jewish line. And getting on the bus, getting on the bus, were five near adult young men, teenagers or young adults. They had rings on their ears, long ponytails, and they get on not on not the front of the bus, they get on the back of the bus. There were five of them. So, and the bus driver opened the back door, and you, you could barely see a thing. So, so I'm saying to myself, boy. <laughs> I, these here comes a free ride. Boy, was I wrong. Um, and they took the, one of them took the bus card. Yeah, those days they used bus cards. So they pass the bus card. Each person passes the bus card down to the to the uh, uh, to the uh, uh, to the bus driver. He clicks it four times and sends it back. The person who's owned the bus card or had it said, "Lorba Hamesh." Not four, five. And he sent the car back all the way down to the, to the front of the bus. Me kam cha Yisrael. Me kam cha Yisrael. Of course, we all have, you know, I, we all have things that we have to work on. But it, he could have easily just said, oh, four, forget it. Or not even sent the car at all. He probably could have got away with that. Me kam cha But then my favorite bus story. I was sitting on another crowd. And um, uh, uh, I actually, yeah, I, mean, I think I was standing. At that time, I was relatively young. I was, uh, I was uh, around 40 years old. And in front of me was a man with his son, his teenage son. A somewhat elderly man gets on the bus, and it's crowded. And he, it's like on the fourth seat. So the person gets there, and the father turns, he's a, He's a Svaradi. They, they both, of course, have kippot. And the, the father says to the son, Moshe, Amod. So Moshe dutifully gets up, his father told him. So the elderly man said, no, no, Deshev. Moshe sits down. So the father says, Moshe, Amod. Kum. Gets up. And the elderly man says, ain't so bad. Deshev. So Moshe sits down. I think this happened one more time. Finally, the father looks at the elderly man. He says to him, Adoni, which is, of course, a term of respect. Adoni. Katu. I will always remember this. Katuv b'torat Moshe Rabbeinu. It's written in the Torah of Moshe Rabbeinu. Ipnei seva kakum. Hadarta pnei zaken. And you are to stand up before a, an, a, an old man and you shall, shall give proper respect to the elderly. And then he said, he said to him, not that you don't know the Pasek, you certainly know it, but I have the obligation to train him to mitzvah. Ah, as long as I live, I will not forget that story. The only thing I don't remember is whether ultimately uh, Moshe's father prevailed or the, the, the elderly man prevailed. But this is what it means to live, uh, among other things, to live in a Jewish state, to live with integrity. Even if not always the people act in accordance with the Torah, or they may, may stray in one form or another, that there's a certain underlying Jewish ethic, Jewish values, Jewish way of life that is transmitted throughout the state. May HaKadosh Baruch Hu bless our beloved Medinat Yisrael with long, long life. And uh, may it exemplify the, all of the psukim that we know uh, 
by the way, and I'll conclude with this, Ramadan, huh? Where no Jew can utter a prayer on Harabai. No Jew can utter a prayer. But yet, Ishaya Navi, 2,500 years ago, said, but my house, my house that it's on Harabait, my Mikdash, will in fact be not reserved only for Jews, that it will be called a house of prayer for all nations. May indeed that come to pass, that through the Medinat Israel and through our attachment to it, and of course to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, we will see the time of Kiveti Veit Filai Karei Chol Ami, that the third Beit Hamikdash will indeed be the house of prayer for all nations. Okay, everyone, have a wonderful uh, Yom Atzmaut. And um, oh, the 18th day tonight, tonight is the 19th day of the Omer. Please uh, let's uh, remember to count as well. Erev Tov, everyone. Amazing. Ken Yehi Ratzon. Amen. 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 Amen.